This video will show you how to set up your Pink Z1 board to run Pink. You will see how to prepare the micro SD card, set the jumpers on the board, insert the micro SD card, connect the USB and Ethernet cables, connect to the board, power on the board and check the status LEDs after boot. Once the board is running, you will see how to connect to Jupyter and how to access files on the board using Samba. Finally, you will see how to connect a terminal to change the board settings or to troubleshoot problems with the board. Micro SD cards preloaded with the pink image are available from Digilint. If you already have a micro SD card with the pink image, you can skip this step. To make your own pink micro SD card, you can download the pink image from the pink.io webpage. You will need to extract the image and write it to a micro SD card. If you are using Windows, you can use the free program Win32 Disk Imager, as shown here. In Win32 Disk Imager, select the image file and the target device which is your micro SD card and click write. We recommend you use a card at least eight gigabytes in size. If you're using a Mac or Linux, you can use DD to write the image. You can find full instructions for writing the image in the pink read the docs. You can find the link to the pink read the docs on the pink.io website. First, check the power jumper at the bottom of the board labelled JP5. The Pink Z1 can be powered from a micro USB cable or from an external power regulator. USB is the recommended configuration and should be suitable for most applications. If your design consumes a lot of power or if you are connecting external peripherals that may require more power than USB can provide, you can use an external power source. For USB, Set the jumper to USB, the bottom two pins as indicated, and for an external power regulator, set this jumper to reg, the upper two pins. Set the boot jumper, JP4, to SD, the upper two pins. This configures the board to boot from the micro SD card. Take your micro SD card loaded with the pink image and insert it into the micro SD slot on the back of the board. Turn the board over and insert the card as indicated. The socket is spring loaded, so push the card in until you feel it click into place. The board can be powered by USB or from an external power regulator. If you're using an external regulator, make sure to set jumper JP5 to reg. The board can accept between 7 and 15 volts. A 12 volt supply is recommended. The connector is a 2.1 mm center positive barrel jack. The USB cable can also be used to connect a terminal from your computer to the board for debug purposes. It is recommended that you power the board via USB when you first set up the board. Connect a micro USB cable as indicated. The other end of the USB cable can be connected to your computer, or if you do not need a terminal, to a USB plug or even a USB battery. If you use a laptop to power the board, make sure the port is not set in low power mode. Connect the Ethernet cable as indicated. You can connect the Ethernet port of the board to a switch or router. You will use a computer with a web browser to connect to and program the board. You can connect an Ethernet cable from your computer to the switch or router, but if your computer is already connected to the same network as the board, for example, if it is already connected to the router wirelessly, you don't need to do anything else. As previously mentioned, you will need to power the board. If you don't want to power the board from a computer port or external power regulator, home routers usually have USB ports available that you can use to power the board. You could also use a USB plug. You can also connect the board directly to the Ethernet port of your computer. 
With that direct connection to your computer, the board will not have internet access. You will be able to use Pink, but you will not be able to update your board or install new packages. If you connect directly to your computer, you will need to manually configure your board to have a static IP. In your browser, you will need to connect to the IP address of the board rather than the board host name. To configure your network connection in Windows, go to the Network and Internet section in the control panel. Select your Ethernet connection, select Properties, select Internet Protocol version 4 and select Properties. The default static address of the board is 192.168.2.99. Set your IP address to the same range as the board, for example 192.168.2.1. The power switch can be found as indicated in the diagram. Slide the switch to the right to turn the board on. You should see the red power LED indicating the board is getting power. If you do not see this, check the power jumper setting and the USB cable connection. After a few seconds, you should see the yellow or green done LED turn on. This is a good indication that the boot process is progressing successfully. If you do not see this, check the boot jumper and that the micro SD card is inserted correctly. If you still have problems, you may need to re-image the SD card or try a different one. After the board boots, you should see the two color LEDs flash blue and the four yellow-green user LEDs flash and remain on. This indicates that the board has booted successfully and you are now ready to connect to Jupyter. On your computer, open a browser. Internet Explorer is not currently supported by Jupyter. Chrome, Firefox and Opera are recommended. If the board is connected to a network, the hostname should resolve and you can go to pink 1990 in your browser, where 1990 is the port for the Jupyter server. When the board is connected to your network for the first time, it may take some time for the hostname to resolve. If the board is connected directly to your computer, you can browse to the default IP address of the board, 192.168.2.99, followed by the port again. You may need to configure the IP address of your Ethernet adapter. The Jupyter password is Xilinx, and once you log in, you are now ready to start using Pink. For problems, see the Getting Started documentation on the Pink Read the Docs. Samba is running on the board. This allows you to connect to the board as a network drive to transfer files. In Windows, you can browse to the Samba share using double backslash pink. In Mac OS and Linux, you need the smb colon prefix and a double forward slash. You can find full instructions for connecting to the Samba share from different operating systems in the pink read the docs. In the Jupyter Home area, select New, then Terminal. This will open a terminal as root in your browser. This gives you access to the Linux shell. To change the hostname, in a terminal, execute the script pink underscore hostname dot sh. This script is in the user local bin directory. Pass the script the new hostname. This should be a unique name on your network. You will be prompted to restart the board. You can do this by running shutdown-r now. In the Jupyter terminal, you are already running as root, so you don't need to use sudo. You can also check the network configuration of the board by executing ifconfig in the terminal. You can check eth0 for the dynamic IP address and eth0 colon 0 for the static IP address. You can also connect a terminal using the USB cable. This is useful if you can't connect to the board using a browser. You need to have or install a terminal emulator. For Windows, PuTTY is one example and is available as a free download. You need to know the COM port of the board. In Windows, you can find this in the Device Manager under Ports. The COM port number will be listed after the USB serial port device. 
in this case COM7. Launch PuTTY, select Serial as the connection type. Enter the COM port number and set the speed to 115200. Click Open to launch the terminal. For further information and support, see the pink web pages.